Hey, um, listeners, this is the Theory of Learning with Garrison and Sarah. Hi there. Uh, so yeah, learning is, is a thing that, that happens both uh, consciously and unconsciously, right? Absolutely. Whether you believe it or you're not believing it, <laughs> you're learning. Yeah, because I look back at all of the things I've learned, but I don't really n- n- know, like, where I learned most of it, you know? Do you, do you have that? Yeah, like, how did I... I become the person I am today like it's just like unconscious learning whether it was like by my own free will or by the molding that surrounded me as a child parents teachers whatever it just kind of happens yeah, it's probably all of that really so like I have a question for you now this this is probably gonna be a very discussion because I feel like you have some pretty good points about learning um but do you ever find yourself like in like okay I totally want to go learn this thing and then once you're like okay I'm in the mode to learn and then all of a sudden you're like I don't remember a thing that was said or it's like you like you, it's like the, the mode of learning is just gone once you start to learn do you ever get like learning block I, I don't know maybe that's well that's where studying comes from right maybe. okay I mean you can't expect to like just teach yourself something or be taught something once or two or three times and just get it i guess that's a good point i guess i'm like oh yeah it could be superman look through a book x-ray vision and then memorize it and a whole like that like biosis or something but it just doesn't work that way especially when you get older it's harder to pick up new things yep 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 um oh yeah because okay so you were you mentioned languages like yeah i would like to learn some more languages um i feel like that's a very important part like because there's like so we've talked about the brain past in previous podcasts right and i don't think we ever really went into like the different parts of the brain and like how um there's different parts of the brain that absorb different information so like language is a language part of the brain and correct me if i'm wrong but it's probably the hippocampus i really like that's one of the things i failed to learn biology and anatomy was the anatomy of the brain probably the hippocampus but i might also be wrong and then there's like there's like language parts of the brain and then there's like a uh, math parts of the brain uh, that's a really laze blah way of saying that but um yeah we had a brain podcast right we did i don't think we brought up any of this we did not <laughs> <laughs> um uh right so wh- uh what are some of the things that you wished you learned definitely, earlier than, than... Uh, like earlier than now yeah definitely more language and like more math maybe definitely, yeah. because i feel like uh, i'm kind of kindergarten level math yeah compared to <laughs> like a lot of other people that understand more things like we talk about a lot of really big ideas and real big hypothesis like on, on a lot of our podcasts but the math behind it is i think the only part that can actually prove some of these theories some hypotheses this is yeah i it seems like like more now there's a lot more uh things in in media and and entertainment that that sort of uh um shows science and math in like a positive light than mm-hmm. uh, than I think it did when we were younger because it really didn't seem uh, as like uh known or, or glamorized back then than it does now and I and I think maybe if there was more of that back then maybe I would have been more inclined to the sciences stuff like taking a different route N- no no just like maybe in- enjoyed it more right yeah I mean so okay so thinking about learning right so what is important to learn like as a as a person what are the things that are most to learn as a human important to learn in schools or just in life ah uh, i feel like in life maybe maybe not necessarily we're learning school like i feel like okay we'll bring that up in a bit it's from like financial stuff in school that that would be cool if we learned that in school but i that cool <laughs> so here we are i needed my mom to help me out with my taxes this year what was the question so what are like the important things to learn in life um, as a human like critical thinking that's important skills, to learn. yeah uh some uh some, like sympathy some compassion so like emotional intelligence yeah well put yeah okay uh some other stuff i feel like emotional intelligence is a big one because we don't there's no real way to learn that except for by being kind to other people hardships yeah yeah well it's kind of like hard to say well, okay so when when you say uh what should we learn um outside of school then how so how would we learn it unless right i mean like how what are you implying on like how we should learn these things so you're like asking me like how i would teach somebody yeah like is it being taught or or like how are we like how is this information being implemented into lives 
That's a good question because, okay, so when you asked that, right, I, the first thing that came to my mind was, um, this is a story time, by the way, um, was something that happened to me while I was in daycare, um, years, millennia ago, basically, it feels like, um, I had to have been like seven or eight, maybe even younger than that, and I was kind of in summer camp, daycare kind of situation. There was this kid, his name was Christian, he was a little bit slower than a lot of others. I had this, like, like tiger blanket thing it looked like a like a tiger rug but it was made out of like you know polyester fake stuff so it wasn't real but it was super cool and super soft and Christian was like nap time and Christian had taken that blanket and kind of claimed it for himself I was like trying to take it away from my teacher's like no let him have it and I didn't understand at that point it's like but why like it's my blanket like I don't care if he's a little bit different than it's my blanket so I think from an emotional standpoint that kind of taught me to be a little bit more patient people in terms of how to communicate my feelings without being a bitch it's not working out too well <laughs> uh yeah yeah but that like what i'm because because i asked if we are learning this in schools or outside of schools and you said outside so how is it being taught just at it, the workplace or i feel like it would be on behalf of social justice people of society you know like to teach other people how to an emotional person so like a warrior of social justice is that what you're so yeah a social just warrior well uh i i mean i disagree uh because really, like, in that, like, you're kind of leaving up to, to, like, happenstance and fate if you're basically just waiting for their, waiting until they're outside of, of school, and by then it's too late, but if they, if you start them young and, 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 and sort of, uh, lead the way or lead by example, then, um, definitely can help out. So, like, it would be, so if you saw a kid bullying another kid, I mean, this is pretty prevalent right now, too, mm -hmm. like, so if you saw a kid bullying another kid would like most likely step in and be like hey this is okay yeah okay well well you're saying that uh from what it sounds like you're taking a more reactionary approach like you're not teaching them until it happens but you want to stop it be before it starts so teach them like formally teach them not like uh wait until the thing happens for you to, to then uh uh react to that uh situation okay so it would be more along the lines of like how people are taught certain emotions so like a lot of what autistic children are taught is like how to read some because that's the major difficulties that a lot of us have to face is the inability to kind of communicate their emotions and under emotions. So kind of along the same lines as that where we don't want to create just systematically on like emotionally retarded. Yeah and also it uh, like I feel that, like I say this a lot but it's like multifaceted. It, it's it's layers because <clears throat> I think from a certain age of, of, of youth like you really can't really comprehend uh uh, other people's feelings really uh, as as well as you would if you're older maybe partly because of brain development or, 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 or experiences but it's like I mean for me I can only speak for myself but uh, I feel a lot, uh, you know, smarter, both, uh, you know, e emotionally and, and uh, mentally than I did just like three years ago. Yeah. I mean, thinking back now, I feel like I was an idiot back then. So it's, so, so it's like, maybe there isn't really a way then, then to experience it firsthand and, mm -hmm. and, um, and extrapolate uh your past experiences and and uh and recognize other people's experiences and try to uh coagulate i don't know if um, I'll, I'll just use that yeah coagulate that um information into something useful uh i have i'm kind of, I, I don't know where this is going i know <laughs> I, f I feel like i understand where you're going with this though like you are now you now feel like you're more capable of understanding other people's emotion terms your own kind uh, of um yes yeah. uh okay so so for for example, uh, when I was driving here, someone cut in front of me, uh, and maybe just a, a few years a few years ago, I might have thought, you know, what's the uh, rush? Why are you riding right past me? But now I think, okay, maybe they had to, you know, take a dump, so they so they're rushing, right? So I, I kind of try to look at it from a different perspective. I like how poop I... is always like brought up <laughs> in all of our casts, <laughs> whether it's this yeah. one or about animation mm. in any genre <laughs> like yep poop is always brought up because you know what everybody does it yeah uh yeah maybe that's one thing to learn to like talk about like Wait, our yeah, bodily functions we should, we should oh man <laughs>
Uh, maybe after the Flat Earth one, you can do a poop one. <laughs> so Please! Okay, final <laughs> final cast for the theory of dot, dot, dot. Well, until dot, dot, dot becomes more dot, dot, dot. Then, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll finish... We'll finish off strong with the poop podcast <laughs> for the theory of dot dot dot. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, okay, we gotta figure out. Okay, if, I, if any guests come on. Oh, Side note: yeah. guests. We need some. We need somebody to come on for that one. All right. Um. So back to learning. Uh. Yes. Yeah, so I, I will. I try to look at it from a different perspective, and maybe that's not like really possible until you've uh, had some sort of uh, like you know some sort of suffering. I guess because because understand. I don't know. I, I feel like that's true on a lot of levels, but on a lot of other levels, it also, it could create the effect too. Explain. Because, because you may have suffered, may want to seek revenge on the world. So mm -hmm. mercy is not an option. Yeah, it's probably a case by case basis. Um, cause you very well could go in the opposite way, you know, uh, with a lot of these, well, okay. I was going to say school shootings, but a lot of those, um, the people were, uh, on medications and suffering from other things so i can't really say that for certain but you know uh there are you know um you know people seek uh re revenge on their uh partners and different uh cases like that so yeah it could be dangerous, dangerous yeah stuff. yeah and maybe that's one thing that we should also learn. stronger case because if there were if people were able to hate not only know their emotions but be able to get their emotions properly then uh maybe we wouldn't have these like shooting um theater shooting cops just all around killing people in any genre yeah i've been uh sort of reading into nihilist a little bit in the mm -hmm. past cu couple of days um now i would like to think that nihilists are for the most part created more so than than they're they're born it, it's like uh they experience certain certain things or feel that uh the current world is unshakable or un unmovable and they just want to withdraw themselves and pretty much let the world burn you know uh maybe that could be a case in which uh teaching them be uh you know being 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 more proactive instead of reactive in in their uh teaching of of uh emotional learning so explain nihilism or don't understand what nihilism uh so um um, nihil nihilism is basically you think that everything's pointless um there's no meaning to anything so why try why do anything yeah okay i mean not for me <laughs> for people who are nihilists I, it's a very interesting idea i get it um well i guess uh okay so when i say this i don't mean to uh condone that be belief in, in in nihilism but really they're kind of true in some aspects like you know uh we live 80 70 80 90 years and then we die and, and then we we hope and we, we may have kids and, and stuff and such and stuff like that but really you know the so the solar system is gonna uh be swallowed up by the uh sun and, and the galaxy is gonna swallow another galaxy and you know universe you can, will right. explode and you know you know so it, yes so it's like really what are we doing anything for i mean I, maybe that's like the first step though to like discovering what your true meaning of life is because don't we just give ourselves meaning like engine yeah i think we've all heard like uh pe pe people say or or maybe we've said it ourselves you know what uh what is humanity for or or no uh, or what is humanity's purpose and really i just think it's w uh, whatever you make it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's weird too because like with all of the social constructs we have in like um, you'd think that with a nihilistic view you'd be able to kind of make your own world but in the same sense with all of the like social constructs we have it also makes it kind of difficult so you really have to figure what out what do you mean by social concept uh i mean like the fact that we have to pay taxes is a good one um you know all right yeah like <laughs> i thought about this um for quite a while uh like maybe since i was like a eighth or ninth grader but what is money yeah what is <laughs> yeah what is money what is this monetary value we have to provide for ourselves to feed and live yeah because um we had like trade and barter for a while mm -hmm. that worked out pretty well but really it's like um f uh, finite uh re resources um but uh i, I I don't know. It, it just sort of seems like a way to, to like keep certain pe pe people down and raise not us, but like you know the one percent up. Right. I know it's a very weird turn conversation, but okay. So yeah, social constructs. I think that's a very thing, and we we don't really like learn like money, that. like money, and and what else? Uh. Okay. So tax money. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I don't know why I'm having a hard time thinking about one. Um, government, which also kind of sort of ties money. Uh, all the big education. So, social construct. Yeah. And government. <clears throat> uh, yep, government is a social so construct. We're, we socially decided one day we need a leader. So Now, that's the uh, thing that, so like, we need leaders. Um, it, I don't think it's feasible for everyone to just uh, go around all willy-nilly. Mm -hmm. There needs to be someone to uh, to inspire the people and, and, and to and to be able to uh, use each person's ability to better uh, humanity or their, 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 their tribe, their village or whatever yeah i mean i i completely agree with you but like what about like our social construct like it'd be so easy just to live in... okay so uh so what so what do you mean by government being a, a, a social construct you mean more so the regulations and things yeah uh, oh yeah and not so the leader or, or like um uh jo uh other things like that just like the policies and such policy yes laws yes basically all of the all of the above are all social constructs because without like the law that tells me I can't have sex with a horse in Ohio then who knows maybe I would no I wouldn't do it but that that's the thing though it's like didn't someone so, die yeah some mm. yeah someone somewhere did that and no no we can't all just have sex with horse though <laughs> what was your point I I, <laughs> I bring a lot of culture to this podcast I swear it just comes in waves very far apart my point is, is that that might be a huge aspect t to learning, like figuring out your purpose point in the world. What is? I wasn't listening. So <laughs> with, okay, so in, in the idea of nihilism, so going back to nihilism, right? My, my, my idea was that if it was a truly a nihilistic world, like nothing meant anything, couldn't you, couldn't you just do whatever you wanted? Well, I didn't say that the world was nihilistic. I said people were nihilistic. Right, but yeah, so like if you were a truly nihilistic person and believe that nothing ever mattered and you just do whatever you wanted and like well no because uh there's prison um you, <laughs> <laughs> you know because <laughs> there's a prison and no that makes sense and you though. don't have your freedom okay so another social construct prison is it though i mean you don't want crazies walking around and stuff but think about like places like i think it's finland where they have really awesome like jail i don't, I don't even well, they call it okay prison. like you know for small infractions yeah they're they're they shouldn't they shouldn't be penalized uh or in prison for that but you know for the murder the murderers and uh things like that yeah. yeah yeah i mean it'd be nice if they were reformed and re put back into society kind of readjusted but well okay so learning um and the fact that you mentioned that uh is this a good time to bring up that um do you know where i'm going with this no i don't the the death penalty thing do we want to bring that up um you're talking about with like drug dealers and death penalty um like with what donald trump has recently spoken out about been like well if you're a drug dealer no, do you remember when uh like a couple weeks ago we were at the stairs and we're talking about that's right yeah okay so your opinion go ahead say your opinion so i can rebuttal it <laughs> uh okay so sarah's okay with um letting uh sociopaths uh free and letting them roam roam about fault. and i I'll, and she's like st uh, strictly against the death penalty and i don't feel that way okay yeah so i don't think anybody should be killed ever for any by your own self selfish purposes which basically that's what it is it's just a selfish reason to kill somebody like even if you've been tried and sent to prison for so many years for the death penalty i don't think i think it's just selfish because somebody somewhere said yeah i'm sorry you deserve to die you you deserve to die whether by my means or by this person or family or whoever you wronged it's a selfish person who has made that um now why do you think it's selfish or wrong to kill someone no matter what because you're you're take you're stealing from them you're stealing their life okay so there's a really good quote from the book the kite runner which is by hasid khali and he's like one of my favorite authors and it's like the worst crime you could ever commit is um, you lie to them you're stealing true if you steal something from them you're st you're stealing a, a valuable item to that person if you steal their life you're, st you're if you kill them you're stealing life um so that that's just kind of how i th feel about it like it, it's thievery to to kill somebody <laughs> um okay so would you okay uh, they okay so how, how do you know that they'll be able to be reformed and let out into the public but if not say they they stay in there their whole life they're just taking up uh people's uh, tax dollars to... again i feel like that goes back to the biggest social construct give because we have the stigma around that have committed crimes like that 
committed really atrocious crimes like rape, murder, disgusting human acts of disturbing us. And the stigma is that these people can't form, not that they shouldn't form, so they can't. And I think that that is a really bad sort of construct we put in place. Because if uh, Garrison, if you went out and committed a crime, I'd be like, no, that's not Garrison. Garrison would never do that. Why? But I did it. You did it. But that's not who you are. That's probably something. There are serial killers out there. That's who they are. That's and, a part. And... I like the color blue. That's not who I am. Okay, but people who who have been released from prison, there there have been ca many cases where they've killed again, raped again. You're you see, you're putting innocent people in in danger for for some. Jack I guess. Okay, I see what you're saying, but that's also a cheat of the system. A lot of those people, and I feel like I know who you're talking about. I can't remember the name of. Yeah, because okay, I don't think we'll we're we're gonna be able to recreate that magic. No. This, but I think what started was uh, sociopaths, specifically, because they're very like charismatic and uh, they are ma manipulative, so they're kind of able to cheat the uh, system. Yep. And there's a disproportionate dis amount of sociopaths in prison. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that goes back to understanding learning okay so you you were saying uh it it would be stealing from stealing from from them to kill them yes uh but but you're pro-choice isn't that killing the the kid that's a very interesting thing um but i'm also not gonna stick first right with their own body <laughs> <laughs> so there's that uh man we will all oh, man that we should have re recorded that conversation i know that, that was so great there's a lot of conversation yeah. we have that we don't record um uh back to learning um so in school yeah. in 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 the school construct what are the same biggest subjects we'll stick with subject because that's kind of what we're raised on the idea of subject um what are some of the biggest subjects that you think that we, besides wait, wait, okay uh, uh money okay <laughs> finances do did you have social studies i did what was social about them i don't <laughs> know it was like history lessons right. and like humanities wasn't even really a part of it mm -hmm. like it wasn't like how to be a human what was your question okay i really have to i'm sorry okay. i'm like swirling Rolling a chair, Philip's fine. Um, uh, okay, so Sarah's about to pee. Um, <laughs> we are gonna talk about poop in a few <laughs> in a few podcasts. Um, I think my best poops uh, um, have been straught with uh, with uh, great um, uh, break breakthroughs in uh, in um, ideas and and in thoughts. Now, I don't uh, I don't endorse laxatives unless you need them. Um, cause you know, if, if you're not careful, they, they will, they'll, they'll, they'll definitely, um, help you poop a lot, maybe too much. And you don't want like a dry rash butthole. Definitely don't want that. You know, so, so just take things slow, take it carefully, take it easy. Don't push yourself too much. Um, cause you, if you push too hard, you may just get hemorrhoids and, you know, hem hemorrhoids are just something else that you definitely don't want to, won't want anything a part of. Um, uh. I've heard they're very painful, and uh, from what I've read, uh, they can be, they're brought on by uh, sitting on the toilet for too long. And you don't want that because, you know, the day is short, and you really just need to to poop really, really quickly and Speaking of poop, get on with your day. I just got a really quick poop in, too. It was great. I've been drinking a lot of things. Mm. Okay. Um, Back to learning. <laughs> you should listen to to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was great. But um, uh, what were you, uh, uh, topics in school or something? Yeah. So subjects. What about? What was your question? Like, what were the? What are some of the biggest subjects that uh, in school? I think we started the podcast on that uh, with like maybe. Uh, okay. Well, actually, I was gonna say language, but for like two years when I was like in the second and third grade, I did have Spanish, but it was really casual and only for two years so it didn't really much didn't really come didn't from stick. it yeah um but definitely like money and taxes mm -hmm. um some emotional fortitude or something yeah class. emotional for i like that emotional fortitude there should be a class called that there should be a class called uh testicular fortitude where um or uh men um uh train their uh their balls yeah you've never heard that phrase test testicular fortitude no. is it like where you guys like just sit around and like jerk off in a room what? <laughs> <laughs> that's what i imagine no it's it's uh you know being able to like take uh, criticism and um oh. things like that oh you know so you've heard the being a man the phrase to you know have balls right yeah it's basically that oh i'm gonna or, use or, that uh, from now on or maybe in um <coughs> maybe there can be ovarian fortitude as well booby <laughs> fortitude yeah i like 
I like booby fortitude too. Like, I don't know. The first thing that popped in my mind was like one of those like iron chastity belts testicular I never fortitude. understood those like how do you pee or anything I mean do you just wear it all the time I think you're supposed to be able to take it off when the bath but at any other time it's like supposed to prevent like people from raping you oh oh so it's just like a rape thing not to like um not not to like pre preserve yeah something. it's to preserve virginity but like, it, if, if if they can just take it off uh whenever they want then pretty pointless i don't think that they have the key though i think it's like a nun so or they something. So, so so they can't pee and poop when they want they have to ask permission and then sneak off at the loophole <laughs> <laughs> yeah just meet your boyfriend in the bathroom mm-hmm. for a little something something um i think that wasn't very uh that this podcast wasn't very um uh you learned in- today at all <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna learn you today no yeah if you guys learned anything learn that we're not very qualified at this if you guys learn anything you must be like five and not know anything to begin with <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's it. Uh, catch us next week for, uh, what's next? Flat Earth. Really? That's next Earth? That is next week. I mean, next week. week? Yep. Huh. That was fast. It is. Cool. Coming up. Flat Earth, then poop. Let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> do, do the little sound. What sound? Tap on your desk. Oh. It's a new song. All right. Bye-bye.